Hey guys, it's Tina here. Welcome back to my channel. I am currently in Seoul and today we're doing something a little bit different. I am actually going to get a bridal makeover by some Korean celebrity makeup artist, Sun and Park. They work with a lot of celebrities here and on the K-drama sets. Plus they've launched their own brand called Jess Gem. So I'm with the celebrity makeup artist Park and Sun. You wanna say 안녕하세요? 안녕하세요. A big thing I wanted to find out is what is the difference between Korean makeup in like mm. wedding, like bridal makeup. 한국에서는 웨딩이 스페셜한 날이지만 어 평상시에 그 모습을 그대로 유지해서 보여주는 걸 좋아해요. 그러니까 너무 보통의 화장 안고 다니는 평상시 모습에서. 갑자기 특별한 날이라고 뭔가 확 바뀐 모습보다는 되게 자연스러운 걸 추구하는 거죠. 뭐 예를 들면 without color, 뭐, 뭐, 뭐 shading 이런 것들이 눈에 보이지 않게 어, 전혀 튀지 않게. So we're gonna get started. I'm going to get the Korean bridal makeover. So who's gonna be doing what? Is someone gonna be doing skin and then someone's gonna be doing the eyes and features? 제가 그러면은 베이스 메이크업을 하고 손이 컬러 메이크업, 포인트 메이크업 하는 걸로 해볼까요? Awesome, so let's get started. As soon as I sat down on the makeup chair, Park and Son got working on my bridal transformation. Park started with styling my hair, while Son worked on non-surgically enhancing my features. He used a mesh eyelid tape to lift my skin up around my eye area, making the crease appear bigger. Now, it's normal for me to have uneven eyelids, so I do rely on eyelid tape to balance them out. But the one Sun used is less detectable and makeup can be applied on top. So it's a lot better than the old school double eyelid tapes on the market. He then proceeded on to trimming my brows. My brow hairs tend to go downwards, so a little trim will help with lifting up the shape. Next up comes a non-surgical brow lift. With the help of his assistant, Sun stuck on a piece of face tape to help lift my brow up and make it more even with the other side. He says his clients love this trick and I can see why. A small subtle change can really help balance out a person's face and just in case if you're wondering about the tape being seen, Sun actually positioned it so my fringe will cover it up later. Now it's Park's turn to work his magic on me. To prep my skin, he applies the Jess Jep Mask, which is infused with pearl powder and hyaluronic acid that will help plump up my skin and give it more of an even surface to help the foundation last longer. For a moment there, I kind of forgot I was getting my makeup done and not a facial treatment. And just when I thought it couldn't get any better, the makeup assistant dabbed on a little bit of essential oils. This one was from Origins, it's called the Peace of Mind on the Spot Relief. And she popped it on my wrist and neck to help relieve any stress. And she gave me a neck massage to help stimulate my skin and increase blood flow. Ah, it definitely felt like I was getting a spa treatment now. After about 10 minutes, the mask came off and Park applied the Gesture Bear Cream. This is one of their best sellers. He applied it whilst there was still some essence left on my face from the mask and he massaged it into my skin. Now, I know we haven't even got started with the actual makeup yet, but the skin prep and facial correction techniques alone are so impressive. I can't say I've had these extra treatments included in a makeup session before. The face massage was absolutely amazing and afterwards my skin felt so soft and plump. There was no sticky residue, no oiliness, just soft baby-like skin. Now my skin is ready for foundation. Park used the One Drop Perfection Foundation and he applied it with a dense brush that doesn't absorb any product.
He then concealed with the Claire de Paul stick concealer around my mouth and cheek area, which he blended in using the same foundation brush. For under my eyes, Park used the YSL Tujikla pen in shade number one. Next, he mixed a little bit of liquid lipstick with some of the concealer on his hands to create a blush colour and he used a sponge to apply this onto my cheeks. I thought this was a really good makeup trick, especially for those who experience their base rubbing off when they apply blush. This technique will help add colour to your cheeks and keep the coverage in place. Now Park is done with my base and Sun is back and he is going to bleach my brows. He taped some cotton pads over my eyes to protect them. His assistant applies the bleach on my brows while Sun preps my lips with the lip balm. At this point I did start to worry a little bit because one, I've never bleached my brows before. And two, I didn't know how light he was going. But I did trust Sun and I knew he wasn't going to do something drastic. So I just sat there patiently and waited for the bleach to work. Not long after, the bleach was removed and thankfully my brows weren't blonde. My hairs had lightened up though, but just a few shades and it became a nice medium brown. It was a small change, but the lighter colour helped soften up my face. Now Sun wasn't done with my brows just yet. He then went in with a small razor to shave off any sparse hairs. Another good trick he showed me was to apply some cream on my lid before shaving to make sure the razor doesn't irritate my skin. Normally when I shave my brows at home, I don't put anything over my skin to protect it, but now I'm going to start using this trick. Another really interesting tip from Sun was he liked to use a face regenerating oil. This one is from a brand called Beijik and he uses it as a makeup fixer to help lock in the foundation. He just used his hands to pat a thin layer over my base and that's going to help keep it in place all day. Now finally we can start moving on to the eyes. Sun used a pencil liner to fill in my lash line. First he used a brown colour and just worked that really close to my natural lash line. The pencil he was using was a double-sided pencil and it had black on the other side. So once he was done with the brown colour, he just flipped it around and then lined it with black. After that, he set the liner in place using a bit of brown eyeshadow. For the rest of my lid, Sun dusted on a light skin toned shadow. Then he applied a nice coral shade over my mobile lid. And yeah, that was pretty much all he did for my eyeshadow. It was really simple and then he moved on to lashes. He was very meticulous with the way he curled my lashes. First he used a regular lash curler to lift them up and then he went back in with a mini curler to make sure he didn't miss any hairs. Yeah. 
After that, he mixed together a black and brown liquid liner from MAC and he applied that onto my top waterline. I noticed that many Korean makeup artists tend to do this. They'd like to layer on their liners, starting off with browns and then deepening it up with a black liner. This technique helps to give the eyes more depth. Sun then applied the lashes, which he cut up into small pieces earlier, and he applied each piece on one by one. This helps to make the lashes look more natural and help them blend better with my own lashes. For my lower lash line, he then blended in a soft pinky eyeshadow to complement the rest of the eye makeup. For my brows, he filled them in with a brown shadow first. Then he used the Shiromura Hard 9 pencil to further define the shape. He says that most Korean makeup artists use this pencil because it's more waxy and it gives more of a natural finish. He then quickly cleaned up the shape of my brows using concealer. And then moved on to shading. For contouring, he used the Jess Jep Touch Shade, which is almost like a cream to powder contour. And he just buffed that in using a brush, focusing on the perimeters of my face. You can see that there's no harsh lines and everything just blended in really nicely. For my cheeks, he applied a pinky blush from NARS, whilst his assistant carefully spot concealed using concealer pencils to cover up any imperfections that were peeking through my skin. Now, I haven't seen any other makeup artists use this technique, Maybe because it's more time consuming, but overall I think it's a great way for perfecting the skin because you're just applying that extra layer of cover to the areas that need it. So the overall look of the skin still looks very natural and flawless. After that, Sun moved on to lips. First he applied a pink liquid lipstick. This is a new one from Just Jep. I don't know the shade of it, but he applied this color slightly on top of my Cupid's bow and then he blended it out with a brush. Then he went over it with a darker lip liner and then filled in the rest of my lip. Then he popped on a more vibrant coral lipstick shade on the center of my lips to give it that gradient finish. I really liked the end result of my lips. They looked fuller without being heavily overdrawn and the colors he chose looked really youthful and fresh. Just when I thought we were done with the makeover, Sun pulled out another amazing trick. He started filling in my sparse hairlines with the eyebrow pencil and a little bit of powder on top. Now I know why Korean celebrities have such perfect hairlines. Once my hairline was perfected, my look was complete. What do you guys think? I really love how natural this looks, but then I also see the slight subtle differences, like how my eyes are slightly bigger, one of my brows are more lifted, my lips look more plump. And can we just talk about my skin? Oh my gosh, it is absolutely flawless. Here's a quick before and after photo so you guys can see the difference. Afterwards, I ended up doing a couple shoot with my friend Hendrik and these are the photos he took. Thank you so much. I love it. I think it's so nice and natural and I got a lot of tips as well. So thank you so much for joining me. If you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll speak to you guys next time. Bye! Thank Bye. you!